Hello, I'm Senator Joe Manchin. It is my pleasure to send my sincere greetings to all of you attending this annual mining symposium. I wish that I could join you in person, but Senate business has kept me in Washington, so I've sent my state director, Kelly Goes, to visit with you in my absence. I hope you share your ideas, concerns, and priorities about the future of this industry with her. I would also like to thank my good friend, Bob Procopo, Executive Vice President of AIG Global Marine and Energy, for his leadership in the energy and infrastructure sectors throughout the years and for organizing this important conference. I hope you're enjoying your work here and that you're also enjoying our beautiful state capital. West Virginia's mining industry has such a vital role to play in our country's future, not only because you provide the energy that powers this nation, but also because you create the jobs that can help move our economy forward. Not everyone sees the connection between energy and jobs, but it's a link that strikes right to the heart of what's happening in America. If the next generation is going to have the opportunities that we've had, we need everyone to recognize the relationship between good American jobs and this country's energy security. What we are struggling with right now is this country's inability to find a balance when it comes to energy, the environment, and jobs. We cannot remain competitive if the federal government is in the business of picking winners and losers when it comes to our domestic energy resources. If we are going to free this country from its dangerous dependence on foreign oil and create good American jobs, we need an all-of-the-above energy policy. Coal was a vital part of that mix and will be in the future. From the moment I arrived in the U.S. Senate, I have believed in and fought for the balance between the economy, the environment, and jobs. On my first day in the U.S. Senate, I made it clear to the administration, the leadership of my party and the EPA, that I will always defend the fuel that has made this country what it is, coal. It started when I told the leader of my party in the Senate, Mr. Harry Reid, that I couldn't support him unless the cap-and-trade bill was dead and would stay dead, and it is. My very first piece of legislation was the EPA Fair Play Act, a bill I introduced after the EPA took the unprecedented step of vetoing a permit for spruce mine in Logan County. The Fair Play Act would prevent agencies run by unelected bureaucrats from retroactively vetoing permits, and now we know that the federal courts agree that it is the right policy. Since they've ruled that the EPA has overstepped its bounds, the administration is appealing this ruling. But I'm confident that we're right and that we'll prevail. I have also been a huge proponent of building the Keystone XL pipeline, which will create good jobs, American jobs, and allow us to buy oil from our friends rather than our enemies. And I've introduced the Bipartisan American Alternative Fuels Act, which would allow our military to use the fuels that are created here at home, like coal to liquids. I introduced the Bipartisan Fair Compliance Act with my colleague, Senator Dan Coates from Indiana, to give utilities a reasonable amount of time to comply with the Utility MAC and cross-state air pollution regulations. These rules would create havoc in our electric grid, uh, force customers to pay higher utility bills, and destroy thousands of jobs in your industry and in our state. If these types of rules from the EPA that demonstrate this administration's misguided approach when it comes to energy, instead of trying to help utilities produce cleaner energy, the EPA is creating unreasonable timelines that will force our industries to shut down, costing us critical jobs and taking much needed energy offline. Instead of embracing a resource that this administration says will make up to 39% of our electricity generation in 2035, the EPA is fully engaged in a war on coal. You don't have to look much further than a newly proposed greenhouse gas emission rules for new power plants to understand that. Under those rules, we won't see any new coal-fired plants built, and that is a grave mistake. Rather than investing in technology that would allow us to use coal more efficiently, the administration wants to cut $93 million from coal research and spend $2.7 billion on renewables that even the Department of Energy predicts will only generate 16% of our electricity in 2035. This country has to wake up and live in the real world when it comes to energy. Our government shouldn't pick winners and losers because when they do, the real people who lose are the American people. We have to put partisanship aside and work together to develop a national energy policy that harnesses all of our vast domestic resources. That means coal, natural gas, oil, geothermal, nuclear, biomass, wind, 
solar, hydro, all of the above. As your United States Senator, I am fighting every day for fairness for our state, for the energy source that has always powered this nation, for energy independence, and for the good American jobs that we can't afford to lose. Thank you so much for being here today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference and your stay in my beautiful home state of West Virginia.